Welcome back and thank you for joining me. This is part one of two videos and in the first part we're gonna be removing the bumper cover on a Volvo and there is a couple of reasons. First, my headlight washers don't work. We're gonna look for the problem. Also, recently someone scratched my bumper and there is scratch mark over here and on the bumper cladding all the way over here. And let me tell you that the camera doesn't show the damage well enough. Outside at different lighting conditions, it's worse. It looks worse. And uh, my Volvo needs to be in good condition. So I have ordered immediately the damaged parts from my dealer. So these are the two parts that we will replace once we take the bumper cover off. And you can see the part numbers. Also in the plan is to install protective mesh in the upper and lower grill and this came all the way from Russia. They are made from aluminum, they are painted in black. So we are going to install it in the upper grill and the lower one to protect the radiators from uh, insect damage and stone damage. Now this bracket was handmade, custom made by my father-in-law which will uh, accommodate the driving lamps. This will be a separate video, it's going to be part 2, installation of the driving lamps. So thanks to my father-in-law for uh, making one. These are Hella 700FF. They are, uh, I would say, uh, cheap, they're not expensive, but I love the look of them. So that's going to be a separate video for the installation of the Hella lights. If you want to get the same kit, I'm going to show you the part number. It's at the lower bottom right corner. You can see two pieces, zero, one. That's the number over here. And you're not going to believe, but Evgeny Module Order is visiting me for the second time. And we're going to do all this together and we're going to have a great time. So let's begin and uh, enjoy watching. First step is to remove both fog lights. Uh, just detach this uh, decorative panel, unscrew the Torx 25, pull on the fog light and disconnect the connector. Repeat the same on the other side. With the hood open, we need to release all the clips along the top of the bumper cover. Just push in the center and then pull on the clip itself. Release all that you see. Next is to unscrew all 8 screws in the wheel arches, repeat on both sides. And on the passenger side the wheel is in a way, just turn the wheels the other way and unscrew all the screws that you see. In the video we didn't unscrew all of them, but later we will. Next are the three plastic clips at the bottom that hold the bumper cover. Here we already removed, we practiced a bit. So there is three. One is over here, second is in the middle, over here, and the third one is away. But to remove, you need a uh, nose pliers. Just uh, pull on the tabs and pull on the clip downwards. And let me show you again. You just need to press on those little tabs and pull mm -hmm. on the clip down. Now, let me tell you that they're pretty fragile, so I might even suggest getting new ones ahead of time, because they do break. Since I'm going to be replacing the damaged plastic cladding on the fender and on the bumper cover, I need to remove the driver's side front wheel, and we need to remove the wheel arch. Yevgeny will unscrew the rest of the screws, there is 8 in total, Torx 25. And there is two more plastic nuts in the middle that hold the wheel arch. Unscrew, it's a 10 millimeter socket and now your wheel arch is free. Carefully pull on it and release it from the car. Now on my car there is a block heater. I'm in Canada and it's very cold. So this is the block heater socket. I need to unscrew the locking nut to release it from the bumper cover. I'm going to put a link in the video the installation of the block heater. So look in the description below. 
I've released the nut and I've released the socket completely of the bumper cover. Next you need to pull on those metal tabs to release the headlight assembly and disconnect the connector from behind, repeat on the other side. At this point you are ready to remove the bumper cover of the car and of course it depends on the level of equipment on your Volvo. There might be additional steps that of course I cannot show you in my video. But use my video as a guide on what needs to be done. And uh, we're gonna start from the driver's side. You need to release the first catch over here. And we were trying to do our best uh, not to damage anything, so it took us some time. I've uh, sped up the video to show you that how much time it took us uh, until we were actually able to release the catch. Я помню, что она тяжело сидела, но я ничего не сломал. Она заходит вот всей этой плоскостью вот сюда, вот за эти две вещи. Driver's side is released, now we're gonna go over to the passenger side and Evgeny is my guy today because he already uh, removed his bumper cover on his uh, X70 D5 so he knows what to do. Now we're trying to release the passenger side carefully until uh, I've sped up of course until uh, we were able to do so. So keep watching and then later on we'll show you exactly uh, how it sits on the car. Нет, ты так его наоборот делаешь это. А, да, 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 да. Стой. Вот так. Done. The passenger side is also released. We are now ready to pull the bumper cover off forward towards the front of the car. And while working on this side, we've noticed this. Looking into the passenger side fog light, there is a uh, pretty extensive connector. And just look at the picture. There is corrosion at the wiring. So no wonder my headlight washers are not working. There's most likely more damage on the wiring in the bumper cover. And this connector uh, will need to be disconnected when we pull off the bumper cover. We suspect that mice did this damage. Next step is a two-person job. Both of us are gonna wiggle the bumper cover off towards the front of the car. And again, depending on the level of equipment on your Volvo, you might see more connections than I do. I don't have parking sensor, I don't have adaptive cruise control. I do have headlight washers though, which are not working for more than a year already. This, now we need to disconnect that uh, extensive connector. Uh, first we need to detach it from the actual bumper. That's what we're doing right now. Just pull upwards on it. There is a little plastic clip. And then to disconnect it, there is that uh, red tab that you need to slide it off, which will reveal another tab, which we push and disconnect the connector. That's what we're doing right now, pushing on the tab, disconnecting the connector. And now we can take a look at the connector if there is any damage. It's clean and another close up at the wiring. Yeah, the wire is completely gone. It's corroded completely. There is no connection whatsoever. And we suspect that mice did this damage and over time it corroded. On the driver's side, we didn't uh, film how to disconnect the hoses from the washer fluid reservoir. But believe me, nothing is difficult. It's very easy over there. Just uh, pull it from the actual reservoir. Now let's take a closer look how the bumper cover is attached to the car itself. So we're gonna point and show you all the four catches. So the first one uh, where the wheel arch is at the bottom over here, I'm pointing it right now. Then the second uh, catch you need to release, it's over here, there's a pause. And two above, Yevgeny is pointing right now. So these are the four catches that we need to pull on on them this will release the bumper cover and this line attaches to the fender along the fender itself now let's take a look at the car itself so the, those four catches correspond first uh, will be where the wheel uh, arch is at the bottom over here Evgeny is pointing here 
second one over here and two catches along the fender itself. I hope that this was uh, well presented and that uh, I've explained it uh, well enough so you can easily follow uh, what I've did in the video. So we're gonna continue. Next step will be repairing the headlight washers. So what we're doing is checking the wiring for any damage and re-insulating it properly. And let me show you what kind of findings we have. So just look at the damaged wire that I've cut out from uh, the bumper itself. Just take a closer look. This looks like an old damage from mice. The car sat uh, at some point for a long time with the first owner. Uh, and uh, you can see the wire starts to corrode already. So this is what we need to carefully identify and immediately replace the wiring and re-insulate it properly. So we've done it with Evgeny together on the whole wiring in the bumper cover and we're going to show you the final result in a moment. By the way the connector where the corrosion was uh, earlier that you've seen is all fixed up. So here is the final result. All the wiring was checked, repaired, the damaged uh, wires were replaced, properly insulated so there is no uh, future problems and uh, a little bit later we will reconnect and test if the headlight washers will start working okay now we're gonna go and remove the license plate and the license plate holder itself we're gonna be working now on the grills we will be installing the protective uh, mesh in the grills of course, it's a lot easier to detach the grill from the bumper cover when the bumper cover is off. So a couple of uh, catches using the bone tool. I will put uh, the part number for the bone tool in the description below. And uh, what we did next is we detached the chrome piece from the grill itself. A few plastic clips. And this way it's much easier to drill holes this is where the zip ties will hold the grill so we're doing a lot of uh, holes to make sure the mesh is properly attached to the uh, grill itself and to be honest i should have done it long time ago and i recommend to everybody to install those uh, mesh in your grills to protect the radiators and thanks to evgeny those uh, meshes were brought from russia in a suitcase so thanks to him and let's take a closer look at the condition of my uh, radiators as you can see there is a uh, damage from insects and flying stone it's not that bad but still could have been prevented if uh, the mesh was installed right from uh, the purchase of the car here is the result on the grill looks awesome and uh, we've installed zip ties all around the perimeter and three zip ties in the middle the mesh by the way is aluminum it's very easy to work with you can cut it just uh, with your scissors uh, the zip ties will not be visible once the grill is on the car so now we're gonna go ahead and do the same repeat on the bottom grill a few catches on the perimeter and it's released and same procedure we didn't film here the whole process because I think it's uh, pointless pretty easy job just take your time work your way around and uh, it will uh, look nice eventually and the final result both grills are now uh, protected well recommended to anyone on any car especially if you're doing a lot of highway driving high speed and this will prolong the life of your uh, radiators and uh, when you have a turbocharged car you have also an intercooler so there is more radiators in your car so one project complete now to the other reinstalling the bottom grill just pops in the top grill we're not going to install yet because we still have uh, installation of uh, headlights ahead of us so we're gonna leave it for later okay so the next uh, plan was to replace the damaged uh, cladding on the bumper and uh, 
took us some time actually to remove it, not that easy. And especially if uh, you didn't remove the bumper cover, it's gonna be hard. So two person job here, working around the perimeter, releasing those uh, interesting uh, catches. And then uh, we had some trouble and we found out that we need to remove the bottom, uh, the bottom decorative uh, lip. That's what I'm doing right now, unscrewing the screws. And now we were able to finally release the cladding. There it is, it's in our hands. And we will need to cut out a new hole for the block heater in the new part. So let's go ahead and transfer that uh, chrome bezel onto the new one. Same idea, same clips around the perimeter. Так, вот этот болтик я туда перекручу. Installing the cladding back on the bumper cover is, was so much easier. And then uh, reinstalling the bottom lip and screwing it back together and it's all done. All fixed. Now let's test the headlight washers. We are reconnecting the connector, we reconnected the pump and we didn't reconnect the hoses though. And now we're gonna uh, pull on the windshield washers and see if it works. And yes, it works. All fixed up, so the problem was in the damaged wires. I'm very happy, it's been a long time since they worked. Now to the other damaged uh, cladding on the fender. This is a brand new piece. A uh, couple of clips and 3M tape, double-sided tape. You can see the, all the scratches and the damage here. To remove it, you just pull on the corner here to release. And now just slowly work your way to detach it from the actual fender. The double-sided uh, tape is actually very strong. I was very surprised how well it holds the um, cladding on the fender. Well done. Once we remove it, we need uh, to clean it very well. This will take some time and patience. So, uh, last look at the scratches, you can see here, and let's compare it side by side. And especially outside during daylight, it's visible even more. Now, before installing the new part, we need to carefully remove the residue, the glue, the tape. So, Evgeny is uh, taking his time here and slowly removing the glue. And then there is still a line uh, left over. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be using a Meguiar's um, compound. Actually worked very well using a microfiber towel. It cleaned the fender pretty good. And then once uh, we remove all the residue, I'm gonna okay. clean with some alcohol to degrease the surface before we're gonna apply the new cladding. Now what you see on the left side, that's the um, 3M protective tape on the fender, it's all on mm -hmm. the front of my car, mm -hmm. so don't think that's a residue there. So I'm doing here twice, cleaning the fender well, with a brand new clean microfiber towel. And now we're gonna reposition and click in the new cladding, and uh, we're gonna actually tape it uh, later, we're gonna, when we're gonna be installing the bumper. Next, before reinstalling the bumper cover, we need to cut out the opening for the block heater because we've installed the new part. And uh, this method worked for me last time. I will put a link in the description on how I did the installation of the block heater, which heats the coolant during the uh, uh, winter time, which preheats your coolant, and then it's easier to start the car and you get quicker heat in your cabin. So I'm just using a knife and a torch to cut out the opening. Almost done. That's it. Before installing the bumper cover, we're gonna show you uh, the reinforcement here. This is a solid and light piece. This is what we're gonna drill through 
to install the bracket for the auxiliary lights and the metal piece. So we're gonna drill through both of those pieces later. And I'm gonna include this uh, little clip in the next video. Reinstalling the bumper cover in reverse, Evgeny is gonna reconnect the connector and uh, now we just need to guide it onto the car itself. It's pretty easy, there is actually holes that it can, it can go on the kind of one direction. So that's what we're doing right now, we're aligning and then ju just pushing it into the position. Next is to reconnect all the hoses and the connector for the actual uh, washer pump. And then we're gonna click in both sides of the bumper cover. Clicks in pretty easy, a lot easier than uh, detaching it. Now we're gonna uh, go on the other side and repeat. To be honest, I was very worried uh, about removing the bumper cover. I was worried that we're gonna break something, that it's not gonna align properly upon reinstalling. And let me tell you, all my worries were for nothing. It's, it got reinstalled very well. There is no gaps. It just looks like it was never uh, removed before. So I was very happy with the result. Reinstalling the clips along the uh, top of the bumper cover, pretty easy. And uh, that uh, pretty much completes the reinstallation of the bumper cover. Um, here I'm uh, attaching the uh, block heater cord and then uh, locking the nut at the back. And also do we don't want to forget the three clips at the bottom that uh, hold also the bumper cover. Now it's time to um, remove the protective tape and actually stick, stick the um, the cladding onto the fender so Evgeny is slowly removing the tape and at the same time we're pushing it to make sure it attaches well and make sure you're doing it uh, in a warm environment you don't want to do it in the cold to make sure it's gonna uh, attach very well and some extra pressure here along the fender to make sure it's all glued up perfectly and the result is very nice it looks brand new and despite that the car is already 10 years old um, it actually doesn't differ in color from the rest of the cladding so pretty good i'm happy this completes the part one of two in the next video we're going to be installing the auxiliary lights with evgeny i hope that this video was helpful to you so please like it, subscribe to my channel, don't forget the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And uh, we're gonna continue working in the car, so I invite you to watch the next video right now. You're gonna see on the screen, so click on it and enjoy uh, the next video. Thank you and bye-bye.